the negative recross examination of affirmative. Turrets and Fan, you have 10 minutes to recross examine Mr. Albrecht. You may begin when you're ready. Thank you very much. Uh, the first question I'd like, I have for you, Mr. Albrecht, is uh, it, it's a fairly narrow question. Uh, I'm not. Uh, it's the precise question has to do with this word zemiao. Sure. In its various lexical, or various forms that it has. I, I know it's not always in that particular, uh, you know, conjugation. Right. Way. Right. Would and and I'm kind of asking you to rely on your memory here, but do you recall whether the number of times that it's used is uh, more than once in the Bible? Oh, yes, definitely. Absolutely more than once, as well as outside the Bible also. Yes, and and uh, in the Bible, more than 20 times? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I really would not be able to tell you the exact number. I, I, if you'd like, I could I could look it up right away. I do not quite remember. No, no, though. no, uh, but, but certainly not hundreds of times. I, I do not think so. I, no, I definitely, you know, I definitely don't think hundreds of times, no. Okay, and uh, the uh, okay, very well. So, with that in mind, uh, my next question is this: In Philippians uh, three twenty one, I'll, I'll read you what it says. It says, "Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself?" Would you agree with me that this text describes the situation where our body, our vile body is fashioned like unto his glorious body and uh, that this is something positive and good for the person who receives it. Would you, would you agree with me about that? Could, could you direct me to the verse really quick, please? Philippians, what was it, 1-3, did you say? Uh, 3.21. 3.21, okay. Philippians 3.21 reads, Who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, would transform our lowly body so that it will be like his glory, glorious body. And um, I, I, I've got no problem with the interpretation that you're putting on it. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so... I think it fits in I, perfectly, yes. Yes, so if they... So, so it can't... If, if we look at this as... If we express this as losing a vile body and gaining a glorious body, no one would view that that in itself as a punishment in fact it could be viewed as a reward exactly for what word is is it does amy appear in this passage i don't have the greek new oh, testament i don't think it appears in this passage at all okay i, 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 I i'm sorry I, I actually thought you were directing me to philippians 321 because amy appeared here i apologize for that no 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 that's no sorry sorry for uh, the misunderstanding no no i apologize for it looks actually like something that could be a reward here oh yeah absolutely absolutely i i, I think in fact i I would not even disagree with you. I believe that um, in the passage where Zamia does appear in 1 Corinthians, right after that, we see that the person <laughs> receives a reward there as well. I would argue the reward being uh, heaven, eternal salvation. So definitely, in, in, even though we don't find it here, uh, I can definitely see that uh, in certain instances, Zamia can directly be connected right afterwards to uh, a person receiving a reward after going through a certain uh, type of punishment or trial. Uh, and, and in fact, I mean, the, the uh, person, uh, if I understood, uh, if I understand your position, you, uh, you believe that purgatory actually does something good for people. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. So, uh, so even if purgatory is unpleasant, nevertheless, to say that it's strictly punishment is, isn't quite to describe the whole picture. It's no. Actually right. right? Purg pur purgatory, uh, many people use different, um, different ways to describe it. But regardless, purgatory brings us closer to God. It, it, it is us being even closer and more present to God because we're being purified. We're, we're coming closer to Christ and we're coming right. closer to that reward. So, yes, absolutely. So, in fact, then, it doesn't uh, – this debate doesn't really hinge on whether or not zemiao means punishment or not, does it? Oh, no. The debate does not hinge in the word zemiao. The debate hinges around uh, – well, as, as, as the title says, around whether Scripture shows uh, uh, in, in totality whether purgatory is a reality and whether the fathers show it as well. But, no, the debate right, does right. not hinge upon that one word. I would never, ever argue that. Great. And uh, this uh, – the, the passage talks about uh, – Men's works being tried in the fire. Absolutely, uh, yes. And, and, and sorry about that. Doesn't let me, uh, verse 
13, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13, if you could turn there. Yeah, give me one moment. Or, or, or you know what, you, you could, uh, as I'm turning there, you could go ahead and read it out to me. I, I was thinking about doing that. Okay, so great. In, uh, in, 1, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13, we have the, the, uh, the expression, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And uh, my, my question for you is whether you think that, the, uh, you know, that this, this expression, uh, every man, uh, is, is correct. Uh, it, absolutely. It, I, I would argue that uh, if the scripture says it, it, it has to be correct without a doubt. Okay, so uh, – In other words, I, 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 don't, I, I don't limit this just to uh, – for instance, I know a number of individuals, uh, not just uh, uh, Catholic, but I know a number of uh, individuals, uh, Protestant and Catholic, uh, limit this to a certain group of individuals. I think when it says uh, every man, I think it's rather clear that every man's work – yeah, right. So there's uh, there's no exception here for somebody uh, like uh, the the saints or uh, no exception the, uh, at all. I think no exception. I think that the fathers were very clear. I think the father. Well, of course, I would I would definitely argue in a different level um, in regards to the Virgin Mary and of course uh, theological beliefs and all of the of the other all the dogmas that I believe in. But yes, um, there is no exception with any of the saints at all. Uh, th- this includes all of them. I, I think um, I apologize if I did not make that clear, but I definitely do believe that. Uh, I, I thought I had brought that out in my opening statement. I'm aware that a number of apologists, a number of modern Catholic apologists, don't believe in this. But I, I tend to hold to the traditional uh, church father view. So yes, I do hold to that. So you uh, – now uh, – you, then you, if I understood this correctly, believe that it's possible for someone to uh, have uh, have done works of super erogation and still end up in purgatory. Well, no, not at all. A- absolutely not. For an individual, for instance, uh, in reference to verse 14, because verse 14 is clearly the individual the, – his work is not uh, – he, he does not undergo uh, – he does not suffer loss. He does not undergo uh, uh, a penalty. The, the Greek word zemia was absent there. So I think that is perfectly clear that um, the individual is not def- – he is not going to be punished as the individual in verse 15 is punished. And I, I'm trying to pull it up. I'm trying to pull up the father, one of the church fathers. I, 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 it well, is- l- before you go to the church father, let me, let me ask you again. Is it – it's, it says here that in 1 Corinthians 13, the three, I mean, excuse me, 3 verse 13, if I read it correctly, it says every or each or every – Every uh, man, yes, uh, to us. Work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed with fire. Yes. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. Absolutely. So that, uh, the experience of this fire is something that's universal, if I understood this verse correctly. Do you agree or disagree with me about that? Oh, I agree 100%. I think it's, it's a wonderful part, which is one of the reasons why I was trying to pull up one of the fathers. It fits in perfectly with what the fathers well, say. Okay, go well, ahead. Regardless of what the fathers say, uh, the, uh, the question then is, doesn't that imply – if the fire is purgatory, doesn't that imply that everybody's going to purgatory? No, no, not at all, which is exactly why I was trying to look up the father and look up the exact quote for you. I'll, I'll find that in a bit. But no, not at all. The one, here's the difference we see. In verse 14, the individual is saved. He does not suffer loss, and which, which brings in the, the important usage of the Greek word zemiao because in verse 15, the person is punished. In verse 14, the person is not punished, and in verse 17, the person outright loses. He's destroyed, loses his salvation. As the church fathers argued, uh, the majority of them argued that everybody will be judged, which is a a universal fact in Catholic theology. But they all argue that the saints, the holiest saints, would go through fire as if having armor on, 
or as in the, as the Jewish oh, yeah, Encyclopedia yeah. No, points out. I'm familiar out. with that quotation. All oh, right, I'm, yeah, I can't, I can't pull it up at the moment. I wish I could. Uh, no, I'm familiar with one of them saying something, something to the effect that this well, fire won't. Uh, right, won't I, I'm not sure if that was Chrysostom or somebody, but yes, and, and a number yeah, of fathers you said. To me who, yeah, it's it's not very important to me what the fathers said. It's more okay. important to me what Scripture says. All right, but and we're on the same page there. So you, I just don't want you to think that I'm pulling up a father quotation out of the blue, like creating well, it or my something. Reason, well, in fact, I, I would be happy if we had more time for you to present it. But, but my, my thought is, if that father is saying that everyone goes into the fire, how can that mean, how can it still be that he's not experiencing purgatory, even though he's in the fire? Well, let me answer that really quick. I, I know our, 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 our time is, is pretty much up, but let me answer that really quick. It's rather clear. Again, that brings us to verse 15. The, the person in verse 15, uh, in contrast to the one in verse 13, 14, uh, is suffering loss. He's undergoing punishment, and he is saved through the fire. The one in verse 14 is not, is not undergoing punishment. He is saved, plain out, plain out. He's not suffering loss. He does not undergo punishment. And the one in verse 17 is outright destroyed. So on the judgment day, the big difference is the one in verse 14 does not undergo the purification and the suffering that the individual in verse 15 does. I think that's a clear uh, difference there. Okay. Well, I think I'm out of time now, so it's your turn to cross-examine me. All right. Great.